Hi, I'm Nathaniel Green, the Director of Renewable Energy Policy here at the Natural Resources Defense Council. I'm here to explain how biofuels and biopower can actually add to global warming, and more importantly, the simple steps we can take to avoid this, ensuring that they become the source of clean energy that they have the potential to be. Science Magazine just published an important article by a prominent group of scientists and ecologists about a common error in carbon accounting for biomass and bioenergy. I know what you're thinking. Accounting, carbon, snoozeville. But this accounting error threatens to undermine the very point of bioenergy, reducing global warming emissions. Luckily, with a quick fix to the accounting formula, we can correct this. So here's the problem. Carbon policy in Europe and the US has assumed that most smokestacks and tailpipe emissions from biopower and biofuels are entirely neutral, i.e. that they don't increase the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. So here we have our little biopower plant, burning trees to make power or ethanol to make corn, uh, corn to make ethanol. Today, policymakers assume that all the carbon coming out of the smokestack is entirely carbon neutral, not adding to the total emissions in the atmosphere. But this is wrong. We can see that in the current period, our bioenergy plant has almost the same impact as a fossil fuel plant. Carbon that wasn't in the atmosphere is ending up there to make our energy. To justify the current incorrect accounting, many look to past absorption of CO2 by plants and claim carbon neutrality. But if we add the past in, we can see that this is still wrong. Carbon that wasn't in the atmosphere is still ending up there to make our energy. So what's the solution? We have to put land into the formula and count the carbon coming off the land in the biomass. We can't just assume that bioenergy is carbon neutral. Instead, we have to at least maintain or increase the amount of carbon absorbed in our lands if we're ever going to balance out this initial release of carbon. If we simply maintain the level of carbon in the land over time, we can spread this initial release over more and more bioenergy. But that may not be enough. Let's say we regrow our forest out here in the future. But remember, forests take a long time to grow, and we have to account for the fact that the forest might have been absorbing carbon anyway. Another key factor, we also have to make sure that we aren't simply displacing demand for food, fiber, somewhere else in the world. After all, if the forest or field we use to grow our biomass was being used before, it's not like the customers for that stuff have simply gone away. In fact, with population growth and rising incomes, and, uh, those demands are only getting bigger. Ultimately, we need to account, do our accounting right, add up the emissions and sequestration, and only support the bioenergy that's providing real benefits. Following this approach, our carbon policies can help drive the best use of our lands for all demands, food, fiber, and energy. But as the article in Science points out, our climate policies at this point are largely ignoring the emissions from biomass and we're counting them as zero. There's another way to look at it. It's like squeezing a part of a balloon. <laughs> um, if this balloon represents all our greenhouse gas emissions, we want our climate policies to drive them down so that the balloon deflates. But if you only squeeze one part of it, say the fossil fuel emissions here, then industry has a simple incentive to shift their emissions over here to the bioenergy part. The balloon keeps growing, we get worse global warming, and we lose all of our forests, rainforests, grasslands from the US to Brazil while we're at it. It's a bad idea. Here's the thing. Carbon dioxide has the same effect on the atmosphere, global warming, whether we're accounting for it or not. But we can't reduce emissions if we won't admit they're happening. And unfortunately, the clean energy bill that passed by the House earlier this year makes the same accounting error. error. Now it's in the hands of the Senate to fix it. Here's what they can do. Reward bioenergy made from biomass that is absorbing more carbon than is being admitted to smokestacks and tailpipes. In the future, an ideal strategy would be to count the emissions at the smokestack just like any other emissions, and debit or credit the emissions and sequestration of the land through offsets or eventually by putting land under the cap. 
This would encourage good land management for all demands, including food, fiber, fuel, power, development, everything. Well, I hope you're still awake, and this has helped a little bit. Thanks for tuning in.